Just wanted to share a nifty little activity that you could use in various math classes. Uh, if you have extra time and you want to keep the kids engaged. This, uh, this particular activity, um, it's called Four in a Row, and it was created by a man named Brad Fulton, a teacher, and uh, he's appeared at a number of conferences, and he has a, a bunch of great stuff that you can find on Teachers Pay Teachers. Anyways, uh, I, I saw him talk about this Four in a Row game at a conference one time, and I ended up getting the PDF uh, that has uh, a whole bunch of activities. This is one of the activities. And uh, I used to use this. I would print out the activity onto transparency and use it on one of those overhead projectors in the old days. Uh, and uh, But, but I, I was always thinking to myself, I like the activity and I wish there was a way to use it with our modern technology with the computer. So anyways, uh, what I did is I, I used a, a program called Snipping Tool or Snip and Sketch uh, to, to grab this portion of the image from the, um, the PDF. And the part that's kind of neat and you might be able to use in other activities that, that you do with kids is that I, uh, I, I, I'm using Google Drawings. I'm using Google Drawings to do this instead of Google Docs. Um, Google Docs and Google Slides are kind of limited in what you can do and Google Drawings give you extra capabilities. So what I did was uh, I figured out a way in Google Drawings to make a, an object that it is transparent and by doing that I was able to make these transparent markers uh, that are something like what we used to use in the old days when we had transparencies and overhead projectors so I'm gonna tell you how this four in a row game is played and uh, the way it works is this is uh, you break the class up into two teams and preferably you get them to, to you, you, you take, you know, kids are on one side of the classroom or the other. Uh, so they're, you know, they're, they're battling, uh, the, half the class is battling the other half. And you have the teams choose whether they're blue or red. And then uh, they, you, somehow or another somebody has to decide who goes first, blue or red. Whoever decides which, whoever goes first, they have to choose where to put the yellow and the the yellow and the green markers. So, uh, so, but 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 they can't tell you where to put. Well, yeah, they they do. They have to tell you. They have to tell you where to put these markers down here. But the thing is this, they have to decide where they want their colored marker to go. And, uh, and the goal is, is to win a game of four in a row, which is a little bit like tic-tac-toe or, or, uh, or if you ever played Connect Four, it's a little bit more like Connect Four. So uh, what the goal is, is to get a bunch of your colored markers in a row and you can win either diagonally or, or vertically or horizontally. And uh, in fact, it, it's a great opportunity to discuss that kind of mathematical language with students. Um, certainly we have vertical and horizontal lines uh, that we have to that students have to know about. Anyways, uh, so the, the kids have to figure out where they want to go first and then they can't tell you where they want to go on the board. All they can tell you is where to put the yellow and the green marker for the first turn. So uh, so let's say they decide we want to go at negative 4x, okay? They'd like to put one there. They need to tell you, well, maybe negative 2x and positive 2, and that'll get us a negative 4x. Um, so, so if they tell you 2 and negative 2x, you can then ask them, well, where, where is that? And then if they say the correct thing, then you can go ahead and, and give them the marker. Now, I have to admit, I usually let the, the team work on it until they get it right. Right? but there's no reason why you couldn't just say well you got it wrong it's next team's turn uh, uh, anyways we're gonna keep going here here's the part where things get really interesting is that when the next team gets to go they don't get to move both markers they only get to move one marker again the next team may decide to start their own offensive strategy or they might want to be defensive by blocking any possible path to four for the other team. Well, uh, they can only do that by moving one of these two markers. They cannot move two at a time. And that's the way the rest of the game progresses. So let's say they decide they want to block blue over here and they want to do a negative two Y. 
Um, let's see here. They can uh, they can go to maybe uh, well if there was a negative y we could do it, um, but I don't see a way for them to do it. I don't see that they can even get there because um, if they move this negative two x one around, the best they can get is negative two. Uh, or they could get positive 2y. They don't have the option of negative 2y. The, let's see here, what could they do? They could go and try maybe, maybe negative 2xy, but again, let the kids figure that out. Um, and they could do that by telling you to move the, and again, they can't tell you they want to go to negative 2xy. They have to say, move the yellow marker to, from 2 to y. And there they could then, and then where do you want to go? Negative 2xy. So uh, that would be the red team, and then they, you put their marker on the board. And again, the blue team only gets to choose one of those markers. And the play goes back and forth until one team has four in a row. And I will tell you that the kids become really engaged in this. Now, the thing that's really cool is that uh, this, this is a great way to practice um, dealing with factors for kids. Uh, and as you can see here, these are algebraic factors. But I want to show you a couple other things real quick. Check this out. This Brad Fulton is just a genius. Um, what, he, th what he figured out was, is this factoring game or this four in a row game could be done in a variety of different ways. So your factors could just be numbers and have kids practice their multiplication tables. Or your factors could be decimals. And, uh, and look at this. Yeah, I don't know, well, I'll let you come to your own conclusions about this. Or your factors could be fractions and look at all these cool products or your factors could be percents or your factors could be just integers and again you get to practice the multiplication tables or the factors could be larger numbers and of course the algebra factors and why not binomial factors huh Okay, and then of course, if you just wanted to make up your own game with whatever kind of factors, um, that is an option as well. Okay, anyways, I just wanted to share this uh, this tip, this trick, this hint. Um, hopefully, this will make your math class a little bit more fun and interesting. Uh, and I will provide you with a link uh, to my uh, my demo game and uh, and let me know if you're interested in figuring out how to use these materials.